A warm welcome back to Globetrotting. As I push for 50,000 subscribers this year, your support would be greatly appreciated in hitting that button if you haven't already. But to today's video, when announced in 2019, the Airbus A321 XLR, you may recall, received a lot of attention. But if you're new to the industry, not to worry. Why did it receive so much attention? Well, not only was it a new iteration of the popular A321 Neo series, but it's also because of what it harboured for airlines that would say, choose to operate it. The extra long range, as the name tag suggests, would mean for some companies, single aisle travel would be redefined when it would eventually debut. That debut is expected to come this year in 2024, following a delay in certification that came about after safety concerns were present. This related to the additional fuel tank that makes that extra long range possible. But why did Airbus launch such an aircraft when they already had the A321 Alar, and has the X XLR been a success thus far. Let's get back to the roots. Before an aircraft can launch, aircraft manufacturers, including all their relevant teams, need to study this prospective plane. Is it going to be a success? Will they break even? There are many factors. And one of the biggest would be that focus on the ability to pounce on a market that really lacked any firm competition, and you could make the argument now, five years down the line, still lacks that competition. Boeing is not moving ahead with a middle-of-the-market airliner, at least anytime soon. And Airbus has a platform that it can build upon. That is me putting some emphasis on the A321 LR, but they believed they could go further. They didn't need to launch a rumoured A322 or even a clean sheet to attract more market share. They know that airlines will flock their way the more they realise that Boeing isn't offering any compelling option. At the launch of the XLR in 2019, we saw several airline customers that were actually holding out hope for Boeing order the XLR, but there were still some of those companies that were waiting and waiting. But soon, they realised that a dedicated 757 replacement wouldn't be coming. So for those airlines, they began looking elsewhere and in steps the XLR. While still boasting considerable improvements in range, it is still a very cost-effective means of operating single-aisle long-haul travel, and Airbus saw it as a way to attract more airlines into the ecosystem and program. You've got to be thinking when you are in the position of Airbus that getting even a handful of new customers to your product, and like I touched on into that ecosystem, can be considered a win. And why is that? Well, obviously, you know the positive repercussions from obtaining an order, but it can go further than that. It is the potential to build strong relationships with customers. Why? Well, come the 2030s, when, say, Airbus are looking to launch a new plane and will be fiercely competing, we'd imagine, with Boeing, well, that relationship following the A321neo could actually matter quite a lot. Maybe it is in terms of deals, discounts, and overall communication. This gap in the market can also centre around the idea that in some instances, wide-body aircraft simply aren't adequate for specific routing, or they could be better used. As a result, it pushes potential airlines out of an opportunity, but then steps a plane like the XLR, which as we know is going to redefine how these airlines can go about longer-hauled flights. See, there's also a customer impact too. The XLR is going to ease pressure on some companies that already have wide bodies and open up opportunities for better connectivity around the world. This means that let's say an airline has a hub, but it also has focus cities. Well, the airline may deploy those XLRs to the focus cities and increase international services and benefit many communities that previously wouldn't have a non-stop direct service. The A321 XLR is no doubt a fascinating prospect for companies that can use its capabilities to their advantage. Airbus defines the XLR as structurally very much like the NEO and just generally part of the A320neo family as an extension. But again, that main focus comes from the rear centre tank, which holds a capacity of 12,900 litres of fuel. As a result, when you pair this with the optional centre tank, the XLR's maximum range can stretch to 4,700 nautical miles. Remember, this will adjust depending on how airlines configure their aircraft, but generally speaking, you're looking upwards of 10 hours of flying time. Altogether, that redefines airlines' day-to-day -day flying into key markets. 
Airlines believe that the XLR can sit side by side with wide bodies in their fleet, which increases flexibility while also adding capacity. The A321LR is a fantastic example that you may recall I've mentioned on several occasions, but if we take a look at its stance within the Jetstar network in Australia, well, since the A321LR has arrived, it's dramatically eased pressure on their fleet of 787s. The 787 being a fantastic wide-body aircraft, but was feeling a lot of pressure really operating the bulk of those international routes. Now, with the LR coming into the fray, the 787s can be deployed to routes that need additional capacity, and overall, Jetstar's been able to launch many new services. With hundreds of orders already existing for the XLR, a large bulk of them actually came in the first week of launch, and over 25 customers are present before the plane has flown. So, has it been a hit with airlines? You could say thus far, yes. Airbus describes it as a network extender, and thus for an airline, say, based in the United States, or Europe if you want to say vice versa, it does open up lots of travel opportunities. Say you're located not in the eastern part of Europe, but maybe Maybe more central or in the western parts, or you're located on the east coast of the United States and wanting to travel to those points in Europe. Well, now you'll be able to do so on a single aisle aircraft, and while for some customers they're not big fans of this and would prefer a twin aisle, for an airline it just opens up new opportunities for efficient services. The XLR though, don't get me wrong, has had its fair share of struggles, with concerns in 2022 and 2023 centering around the potential for a reduced range, as concerns were very visible through the additional fuel tank and fire concerns. Because of this, some analysts warned of a need to increase the structural weight of the aircraft to improve safety, which would thus hamper range. These now can be certainly classified as rumours because Airbus has never confirmed that a range reduction would occur. Nothing's really eventuated from this. They have just progressed with trying to address everything and get the plane obviously into service. And once it does begin flying with customers, it's expected the aircraft will be a fantastic plane for those that have committed to it. And the list in terms of customers is extensive. Whether it is Qantas, the Australian flag carrier, or on the other side of the world, American Airlines. There is a great mix of legacy and low-cost airlines who are present in all corners of the globe that like what the A321XLR will offer, and you'd fully expect that the customer base will grow with time as the aircraft is certified and, like I said, cements itself as a leader in the sector that unfortunately doesn't really see any real competition from Boeing. And to conclude, what I personally believe, just again, my opinion, will be very fascinating fascinating to see is how different airlines utilize the XLR, whether we're talking operations from Australia or the United States. What will the XLR truly bring to each respective customer, whether you are a full service or a low cost? You can let me know your thoughts on the A321 XLR. I really do appreciate the support here on the channel. It is greatly appreciated. As I mentioned, touch on anything you want to about this aircraft in the comments. Stay tuned for more aviation analysis set to release in the coming days. And we'll fly.